Okay, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. Once again, still out here in Tenerife and still uh, doing some product tests in this Ping G410 range. This time it is the crossover. I've got the three crossover in my hands right now. I'm about to tee off with it very shortly. Um, but before I do that, let's just talk about how it looks and I'll throw some images up on screen now. The one thing Ping have done with the crossover, it is considerably smaller in terms of its overall profile than the previous model that is. They've thinned out the top line, although it is still got a fair bit of bulk that you'd expect. And the overall mass of the club is on the larger side in terms of driving irons, but for a lot of people that will no doubt inspire confidence and encourage you to use this type of club. I've got the CB Alter stiff shaft in it, but before I say too much and try and hit this thing, let's get back over to the UK and get a very brief tech spec on this crossover and what Ping have packed into this head. Right, we're going to make this very, very brief indeed, and you can soon get back out in the sun. And whilst I'm on that, why is he out there in the sun and I'm stuck here in the cold? But anyway, that's a different story. Very, very brief of what's happened to the Ping crossover in terms of technology. First of all, the head size compared to the previous model is considerably smaller. The next thing they have done, they have put a 30 gram tungsten weight in the toe of this, which basically extends the, uh, the weighting, uh, the perimeter weighting and once again helps and increases MOI so I'm sure the average golfer is going to be keen on that out there in Tenerife. Internal rib structure which you can see from this diagram I show in front now it's very similar strengthens the sort of uh, for the whole body I suppose the whole structure and once again getting ball speeds very fast across that whole face that's it that's what's happening in the ping crossover in terms of technology but we need to go back and see how it performs out there on the course at Alabama. So that's my opinion on how it looks that's the tech specs from ping all we need now is some shots so what I'm going to do is take you straight up to the driving range and here's some shots that I started off with earlier this morning when getting warmed up with the ping crossover. Into the crossover review, what do I think so far? It's, um, I just played last ball off the turf, so from a fairly decent lie. It's, it's not the highest of launching in the current setup. I definitely think that the, I'm again CB Alter stiff shaft, and to me, they just seem a little bit stiffer than last year's, and I'd love to know if that's the case, because I'm just struggling a little bit to get that club head through, and I feel I'd like to try these in a, a regular shaft for me, because like I said, um, I'm not getting the greatest of launch angle, it is a, it is a three iron, um, but the previous models of the crossover were very high launching, and I'm not quite getting that at the moment. Right, three tee shots there, all with a crossover. Very, very similar in terms of ball flight. The actual, I got a bit more launch angle than I've just suggested. I was hitting a lower ball flight, but they actually popped up a bit. And three of them very, very similar in where they landed, but not in terms of dispersion front to back. There was a big difference, and strike three almost went in the water. I uh, didn't realize that was as close as it was, but strike three, you can see in the distance. Here's the first two balls, not sure which was which. I think shot one was further right, shot two is here. Not a great deal between all of those. But to be fair, I would suggest looking back at the yardage where I've just hit, all in around that sort of 200 yard mark, I would think. It's a handy club to have from the tee. I like playing this kind of thing. I like the driving iron. Yet again, for me, and I've been negative about this hole, uh, but I have to be honest about it, is that I just don't know. Um, no response in the hands in terms of feel for me. It's a very hard, almost tinny sound again. And, and it's been a negative for me throughout this 410 range. And it's the same with the crossover. Three decent shots. I couldn't tell you the difference between either, either of them in terms of what you normally get out the hands. So you would think the pure strike, the longest ball, you'd get that sweet feeling out the sweet spot. 
didn't feel any different to the other two to be quite honest with you so that's the downside for me still on these uh, 410 crossovers Right, so final summary of the pin crossover. I will very briefly throw up some uh, numbers here for you for dry ball data, you have a look through them. They're pretty much as I'd expect them to be. I didn't, again, strike it perfectly well inside at four golf when I tested this, so I've got a much better opinion, I think, from what I've done out here on the course, to be quite honest with you. And I'd suppose a mixed review is the way I'd say it. It performed well out here. Um, but the little things that I have issue with, which is like I said, the sound and feel, perhaps uh, would put me off it. The profile is smaller than the original crossover. I would try a different shaft for me on a personal level. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I'm, I'm a bit, um, would I game it, I suppose is the answer. The answer is no. I think for me, there are far better driving irons that I've found out there currently that I would prefer to game. I suppose that's how I would put the summary in the most honest way as I can put it over to you. But having said all that, it's performed well. And the important thing is, as I always say, get out there and try it yourself. Because my opinion is almost irrelevant, really. It's just that, just one man's opinion. So get out there, give it a go yourself. Uh, stick comments down below. Thanks for watching. And uh, as I end most of these vlogs this week, is uh, I'm going to have a pint.